<laughs> hey everybody! Now you know I've done a couple of videos on trikes, on recumbent trikes, and they are so much fun. Like you ride and you have this big grin on your face, but Lewis hasn't tried them before. And I'm like, Lewis, you have to try the trikes. You have to come for a ride, meet the guys, go on a trike, feel like a kid again, and then talk to everybody about what it's like. And we haven't gone in before about the description of the different trikes, so that's what we we're going to do today as well. Have a go, and then Lewis is going to talk. We've got, we've got Ray, we've got Lewis, you guys know Lewis. We've got Skylar, yay! <laughs> and we've got Greg, and we've got Roy. That's it. Yay! <laughs> so we're going to talk about their trikes, we're going to have a go, Lewis is going to say what it's like. And we're going to have big smiles on our faces. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Even on a trike, you're still going to wear your helmet. Safety first. <laughs> and a jacket on a cold Adelaide day. Right, this is a trike I'm riding. <laughs> I can't remember what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just adjusting this. I couldn't reach, I was putting my foot down and like, oh! So, of course, I had to use the electric. <laughs> Having fun? Absolutely, I'm sitting back. I'm comfortable. <laughs> If I just, if I stop pedalling, no motor, yeah. it rolls yeah. quite well. If you get a bit of a wobble, it makes it better. Absolutely, yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's cruising. Ah, oh, just <laughs> sitting back, nice and easy. You've got easy to reach gears as well, so I can change gear. I've got the throttle, nice and easy to reach. Brake levers, easy to reach. These large mirrors, so I can see Serafina trying to pass from behind me. It's a very relaxed type of bike ride. We're gonna race. Are we? Over mark. Get set. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that was so much fun. That was so much fun. And I'm so freezing cold. I can't feel my fingers. Yeah, but it's so you? cool. So now we're going to check out each of the bikes. So we're going to go and look at at Ray's bike, at Roy's bike, at Greg's bike, and um, and this one, and just learn a little bit more about them. So we'll go and get Lewis to help with that because um, he's more technical minded than what I am. Lewis, hello. Look at him. Look at him. He's just like oh, <laughs> so comfortable. I'm sitting back, nice and comfy. I was saying before when we were riding along that everything's just easy to reach. I don't have to. I don't have to do a whole lot. I've, I've got the brakes here with my hand. I've got a throttle here with this hand as well. Gears with this hand. I've got gears with my feet. I can, it's just easy. I don't you know just, how to explain it's that. Like, I just feel like I need to bring you a cup of tea and a coffee, a, a cake or if something. If you got one, I'd take it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I do so, white, white, no sugar. Thank sure, you. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, do you want to um, check out now everybody's bikes and just have yeah. a look at each individual one? Let's have a look. Know, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are here with Ray. All of these bikes are supplied by Ray, so Ray knows more about these bikes than I will, but we're still going to have a look and see what I can pick up as someone who's perhaps not a trike person. So, Ray, could you tell me about this one that I was riding? Absolutely. First this is a Green Speed. Green Speed is a design bike by an Australian gentleman. Green Speed is a brand. The model is a Magnum XL. XL stands for extra large, so it will take a ride up to 200 kilos. Wow, okay. Yeah, and obviously and, someone quite and, tall as well. six foot. Plus. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. 
Well, for for sort of viewers at home, so they get a bit of an idea, I'm about six foot two, I often say, and you would have seen a lot of videos of me riding, so that kind of gives an idea of, of I suppose, the height of the person that would ride this bike. Yeah. It looks to me like the pedals are the part that are adjustable. They can move out. Yeah, exactly. The boom. This is the boom. The pedals on it. Double down here. This allows the boom to be moved in or out. <laughs> that's out. That's it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? By quick releases. And that's adjustable for le the length of someone's legs. Mm. The seat is also adjustable. That can be laid back more for more comfort mm. or be more reclined. The more reclined you become, the faster the trike will go. And I think we're zooming on the adjusting part of the bike here. As you can see now, these, these just quick releases here. Bike seat will go down. Or up. Oh, yeah. We'll go a fair bit. We could probably could have been riding there. That might see your head. Because obviously they're a recumbent bike, so that's the whole idea that you're you're lying down like yeah. this. And I've done test rides on, on, on lowering the seat. The seat can be lowered by the back, but also by the front. Okay. Uh, I did one ride with the seat all the way up, and I did 72 kilometres an hour. Then I went to the same hill, lowered everything, and got more reclined, and I did 78 kilometres an hour. Oh, my gosh. So 70 plus. 70 I can't plus. imagine going that fast on here. Yep. You've obviously been riding trucks. Well, it's a semi stable. You saw three wheels, so there's abilities there. Absolutely. Comforts there. One thing we were just talking about before is that when you're riding these trikes as well, and this isn't specific to this one, I think this is trikes in general, you don't have to hold on like a vice grip onto the, yeah. the handlebars. No. Even just fingertips. Saying, fingertips. Finger yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's uh, such a light steer light yeah. steering. You know, you don't have to move your hands like, like even just with one finger on top, I can make the whole bike steer. Yeah. So they're really easy to use. Yes. Should yeah. we go have a look at another one? Yeah, and they're all comfortable. I get another green speed here. This is what they call a delta model. We just left a tadpole. This is now a delta where the two wheels are at the back, only one at the front. Uh, popular because the seat is now higher off the ground. Okay. So it's so easy to get on and off. Again, a recumbent style of a bike. You don't lay back as much. Mm. Still some adjustability here. So you can lay the seat down a little bit more. Just here. Get that slots up and down like a telescopic. Mm. Um, again, you can have a boom that's adjustable. The second one is for any size rider. This one's been set up for me. I'm six foot, so mm. 183 centimetres. So that's where I like it. If you put someone on the backs, you can, again, we've got this gobbler to take up the slack of the chain. Okay. So that boom can be moved for a short person or a long person. Makes sense. And then they can pedal. Absolutely. But the beauty of this doll, you can tandem these together where you can't tandem the tadpoles. And then this person, do they get to steer at all? No, no. No. The steering's now locked off from the... Okay, so it forces yep. whatever that does. Yep. That makes sense, absolutely. Uh, Tell me if I'm wrong. Yep. Is that for, have you got an air horn on here? Yeah. A nice loud horn? Yeah. Good, that yeah. helps so that people can hear when you're coming. Yeah, truck drivers. Of course. Pedestrians, dog walkers, people pushing prams. All of those things, absolutely. Oh, with earplugs on when they, when they walk the trail. Oh, of course, even if you ding the little the little bell, they might not be able to hear it, but having a big train horn. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad, that's a pretty good bell, so that's all I try to use. I try not to make people jump. Yeah. But the beauty of this bike, this is uh, two trikes, two, two amours with a front wheel Moved. When the front wheel is moved, you can hook it up to the um, coupling at the back, become a tandem. Mm. Um, so if I would have been riding with my wife, I'd just take un uncover it, put the front wheel back on, and she rides separate. All oh, right. So it's two bikes. So one. it could be two if you wanted it to be. And that, and we can put another one behind it, and another one, and another one, and oh, another wow. one. And those videos are out there where there's thirteen or fourteen of these things tagging one another. Does do the pedals here yeah, yeah. help? They, do they take some load off for the front? For Absolutely. You? And and you got used to the pedals on that one. We didn't yes. really talk about the strump. This has also got a strump drive. Hit that with your heel and it's easy and lower. Ray's just touched on a very good point. It was something that I noticed when I was pedaling this trike. As I'm pedaling along, I can have my foot here and I can kick my heel in. And there's a little button here, and it's on it's on both sides, and it clicks this sort of this piece through here. It's similar to on a normal push bike that I'm used to. It's like changing the front chain ring. It exactly. makes it yep. much easier or much yep. harder. As you see, it's all internal, so you don't need a derailleur post. Mm. The front one here's got a three-speed cassette. The chain ring. Yes. So you need a derailleur post for the derailleur to want to work. And that's the wrong side, Ray. This 
this derailleur is or a nice, manual. A nice friction shift derailleur uh, as well. But you have to be pedaling for that to work. Of this course. one here, you can do a stationary. Mm. And you just kick, kick it with your heels as well. With your heel. Yeah. You've got your foot here and you just you just turn your foot inwards to bump that little bit there. Yep. We'll go to the little Frankenstein over here. <laughs> Let's go have a look. We've covered a tadpole. We've covered a delta. This is a tadpole that a delta put together, basically. Oh, interesting. Again, green speed components, but the, the character who owns this one, we should bring him over <laughs> to explain the, the monster he built or created. But it's got the tadpole at the front and, and the back half of the delta. Oh, it does. Yep. I see that. Call it a Maganura. Oh, because it's blurring two names together, I suppose. Yep. yep. Yeah, so, absolutely. And Roy's also put the solar panel on for a day like today. Yeah. <laughs> Roy, can you tell me about how you've made this solar panel on the roof work? Oh, okay, well, the solar panel's basically sitting on a framework that I've made out of aluminium instruction and 3D printed parts. Wow. Um, it sits in the top of the seat and it fastens down the back and it unplugs and comes off the bike in about 10 minutes so I can pack it away when I'm travelling in the car. And that's charging a, a power converter just underneath here. I see it. Um, that's changing the power from 18 volts to 54 volts, which is what the battery needs. So it's charging the, the batteries just down here, but down there charging that. How do you control the, the motor from yours? You've uh, obviously got a twist throttle as well? Uh, yeah, there's a twist throttle and a small controller. So there's, a, there's a little micro controller just here. You turn it on by pressing the button. Oh, I see. Uh, it even says hello to you. Yeah. And then it gives me a whole lot of information. Lovely. But I have another control panel just up in, up in here. Okay. And this oh, I see it. This me exactly what's going into the battery. Wow. The different thing that's unusual with this one is that okay. the electric motor that everybody has on the front is actually sitting here. Okay, so it's it's mid drive. That's a mid drive in the middle of the bike, rather than being, uh, I suppose, a hub driven yeah. or a wheel a wheel motor. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. This is meant to go on the on, the, which is called a bottom end motor. Yes. It's meant to go on the front, but I've got one of the straps, so I can't afford to lose that. Okay. So I mounted this inside there. Is that one of the Bafang motors? Yes, it is. Yeah. Nice. It's, uh, 250 watt. So, so from about here uh, is an anora, uh, a Magnum frame. Yeah. And the from there off. backwards, I made all the framework myself. Wow. So that's amazing. Very, very impressive. It's. That's about as custom as a bike can get. Yeah, and the reason I use large tyres is there's no suspension, but this gives me a, a level of comfort on the road because mm. this is only 20 psi in the back and 30 in the front. That's that a, gives me a soft ride yeah. without having the complication of suspension. The frame itself was scrap in a scrap bin at the manufacturing place and I salvaged it out of the bin and uh, re-welded it because it was all broken. And the seat comes from a local hardware shop. Oh, that's it like a... cushion off a deck chair that you have out the back. You'd feel like a king riding around on that. That'd be so comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Ray, do you want to show us the school bike, that, school bus, sorry, that you have over there? Let's go have a look. Come over. So this one, it even has a sticker around the back that says the school bus. Ray, can you tell us something about the school bus here? This is a project we had made from Ben from Trisled. Trisled has a tri manufacturing business in Melbourne. I have been transporting children to and from school for the best part of 50 years. 50 years. Now, now I've got grandchildren, <laughs> as you can see, who I take to school. So we had this one designed so the children could ride safely on the back to eliminate driving a car, and and they just love it, don't we, kids? Because cars are boring. Because cars are boring. Do we love it? And because it's very good for kids, but adults are allowed in the back where they might break it. Oh, okay. Mm. We've had other adults in the back. I, we'll take I, was, I think I was sitting in the back yeah, just before. Yeah, Lewis is on it. <laughs> Of designs, I take children in it, which we can see, and put lunches in it, school bags. Oh, Again, it's like it's a recumbent for me. I'm the rider normally. But then you've just got room for two extra people in the back, and the steering will work the exact same way. Yep. Wow, a loud horn. <laughs> steering. This is what they call direct steering. So the, the steering now goes straight to the axle, through the, to the wheel. Where if you look at the other models, they're all indirect steering. We can cover that in a second. Gearbox on the front is a pinion gearbox, 12 speed inside the hub. Wow. So it does a way of having a derailleur again. Yeah, wow. So that's a pinion, 12 speed, German technology, brilliant. Got that on a couple of bikes. Uh, all you do is just a twist grip on this side of the gears, 
As you do. Of you course. Leg, so you can do that while you're stationary. And I can hear it clicking in there yeah. as well, changing gears. That's cool, you can do that while stationary. Yep. There's not many bikes you can do that on. No, internal hubs, that's what they go great for internal gearboxes. Mm. And, and zero maintenance. Yeah. Uh, you probably saw I've got a pedal on the left that looks a bit different. Mm. That's because my left knee doesn't bend. So now when you when I'm riding this bike, my knee doesn't have to bend as much as my right leg. Mm. I remember you saying that just yeah. before, about how you're, you're still able to pedal along even though you've had an injury with one of your legs. Yes, yes, my knee. It also has power assist. It's got an electric motor down underneath the seats of the, of the fang motor there, which drives the chain drive. So with the motor and with the 12-speed gearbox, that's nearly ample. Certainly riding kids to from school, it's, it's enough. Quite a powerful motor. And no. No, not well, quite. It, it's, it's great with children, but when you put two hours on the back, it sort of struggles a bit. Oh, yeah. It's a heavy bike. The whole thing weighs 50 kilos. Mm. Oh. So it's not light. I can carry it. You can carry it. But I suppose it's not about being light. It's just about being able to... It's a transport. It means a transport. I know the wheels make it look like it's a car. Obviously, it's, it's not like... bus wheels. <laughs> oh, bus wheels, sorry. Of course, it's a school bus. Yeah. Instead of cars. Should we have a look at a couple yeah. of the other bikes here? We've got some left. You have to look at the bike that I was riding. Oh, of course. <laughs> tell me. Yeah. yeah, well, you can tell us about yeah. it, but this was really cool. This was really, really cool. And you said, you said that it was faster than the one Lewis was riding, and we raced, and he beat me. Have you seen? <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> but sometimes it's not the machine, it's the operator. <laughs> but this, this, has a, this does have a motor on it, which is more powerful than one that Lewis was on. Yeah. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah. I'm like, Ray said that this is a powerful bike. Lewis, do you want to race thinking I'm going to win? We'll have to do another race. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe these powerful motors. <laughs> that's coaching. You need a bit of coaching. <laughs> This should be faster in principle because the size of the motor is bigger. And it looks like a, it looks a little bit more lightweight than the one that I was riding. It's certainly lighter. This is Green Speed again, which was the Australian bike. This would have been designed by Ian. This at the time was the smallest recumbent trike in Australia in the world. This will fold up the seat or pop off and the back wheel will fold forward. Oh, I can see a hinge, you're right, yeah. But the magnet we looked at earlier does the same. So you can pack it down nice and small. Yep. So it was the smallest thing in, in the in the world at the time, back in yeah. two thousand when they first got designed smallest portable trike but they became less popular as people got older uh, okay you, you saw how easy it was to get off and on the main and mm. wheels bigger bike all around easy to get off easy to get on yeah but as we got older that was what people wanted and this you're you're probably sitting a bit lower to the ground oh, definitely which makes it harder to stand up after it yep much harder to get in and also the design factor you see this design here how far away from the ceiling yeah if you look at all the new designs this bar now it's got I see what you mean. The cross member now goes back closer to the seat. Could I try sitting on it? Yeah. I, I see what you mean though. I mean, you obviously you obviously come in from the front, but you have to lean. You have to lean further back to be able to sit down on this one. Yeah, but to get your feet under your body and you have to stand up is much harder for an older person. Yeah. Okay. With, with the cross members on the newer models, the bars goes back. See. Yeah, feet are now back behind the seat. What can you tell me about that little one over there? Okay. That looks a little bit more sophisticated. Now we're going to an ice truck, inspired cycling engineering. Nice. Out of England. Probably see the pommy flag here. Oh, of course, yep. This is what they call an adventurer, which is very much like our green speed magnum, that sort of uh, clientele. Off-road, crossroads, touring. Bit stronger. Heavier. This will take a 180 plus kilo rider. This model is called the Adventurer HD, HD for heavy duty. So it's got a bigger seat, bigger platform to sit on, and the what's that, the wheel base, the wheel I suppose, is a little bit wider. Understood. Than yeah. A standard, uh, green, green speed made or a ice strike. So you've just got a little bit more stability. Yep. As well. Yeah, we'll take a bigger rider. And this seat, you can see, is very. Cushy. It's extremely comfortable. Greg can tell you, Greg's the owner of this bike. Greg is the owner of this bike. I'm sure he can tell us plenty about the bike as well. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is. And it's blue. It's my favourite colour. <laughs> well, on the dark side. Yeah. What else are you going to do? Is it for sale? No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not. No. I wouldn't need that to you. <laughs> Fully imported from England. I don't know if Ray said that or not. Yes, and he pointed out the flag you've got down here as well. Well, that come on the that was on the trike, so mm. English flag, not English. Australian flag. Oh, yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> not a kiwi flag. Oh, not a kiwi one. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Hey, should I have it? You keep saying, Sarah, and you've got to sit in You've got to sit in it. You have to sit in this. Okay, all right. After all these things, everything looks... else you've been in, dude. <laughs> it looks more comfortable. <laughs> Turn around and back back on, onto it. That okay. way. Okay. Ah, okay. Don't sit on the water, Molly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh. Now, yeah. how does that feel to you? Oh, yeah. I like that. That is really No, you can't cool. take it away. Yeah. Oh. I'll, I'll hold him still. You go. <laughs> I what? see what you mean. Because you, yeah, because that other one I was sitting on was just really racy and, and it didn't even have a headrest. This one, like, I feel like I could go to sleep. It's got full suspension. All wheels have got suspension on them. It just makes so much difference to ride. Wow, lovely. I feel like you're you're pedaling a lazy boy lounge chair. <laughs> Reading your newspaper, uh, sipping on your tea, yeah, so well, comfortable. That's it. They're, you know, just so relaxed to sit on something like that. Yeah. And that's at their top of their line model, so. It is nice. It is very, 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 very nice. And I noticed while we were looking at that, Ray's brought out another one. These two look similar to me, but I can see some differences. Can you tell me some more? The main difference is both are Venture trikes, which are called Adventurer. XL or HD, extra large, heavy duty. This is a standard. So the wheelbase is not quite as wide and the frame's not quite as heavy duty. It takes a slightly smaller rider. Seats are different. You can see this is an airflow seat. Much more ventilation through here mm -hmm. for our summers. So you can get them. There's three different style seats, so fully meshed up for comfort, the luck seat or the airflow seat. That's got an airflow seat. And I see that one looks like it has the suspension as well oh, in the wheels. Full suspension. Yep. Nice yeah. and comfortable. And about down here, yeah. the front, front suspension. Front, yeah. Rear's got yeah. The same. Full suspension, fully kitted out, mud guard. These get hired out a fair bit. The uh, difference with Greg Grease or cassette on the back. This one's got an internal gearbox on the back. That's oh. changing the gears. Oh yeah, I see it. Yep, you can see it's all pulled. So again, for someone who doesn't know how to ride a bike, this gearing's brilliant because there's nowhere... You can't get, get it wrong. You can't get stuck yeah. in the wrong gear because if you're on a hill, you pull it forward. If you're going down the hill, you pull it back. <laughs> Easy. Absolutely. Yeah. What about this one here? <laughs> oh, that's a marvel This bike. is like I could ride over anything in this. Look at it. You could. <laughs> we, we talked about Greg's bike. Greg's is a HD or an extra large one. That takes a bigger ride than this one. This is not really designed for big people. It'll take a 125 kilo rider, which is big enough, bigger than any of us. But it's to go anywhere. 10 years ago, one of these went to the South Pole. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. I was, I was designed, that's why what they got created with. I was gonna say on perhaps sand, but yeah, on snow is a good point as well. Yeah, you could ride most of these on sand, except that yellow seated one, which is a small wheel. Mm. All these will go on sand, this will go on soft sand. Mm. It looks like much. it would ride over anything, like yeah. it would ride over cars. Yeah. <laughs> Young children. A big monster truck. <laughs> <laughs> Young children. It's like a monster truck. Yeah. Like monster truck. Yeah, you've got a monster on it, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> try, you should try it, sit in there. And that one looks like it has a comfy seat as yeah, well. got the comfy seat. Um, it doesn't. Actually, that seat belongs on this bike, and that seat belongs on that bike. That's another story. Oh, this would have been so much easier. Yeah, oh. a, we could put the battery on it. Oh, lovely. That again, I'll be on my day. All right, you guys can finish up. I'm just going to sit here for a minute. Got a, a, oh. a motor here. Yes. Which actually is un, you know, unbelievable. Fun. Is that the same motor that we had on 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 Roy's solar powered bike? Yes, it is the same motor. Yep, and those two are behind you uh, also got the fang motor. Yes. The crank motor, so it rides through the front crank. Yes. You need to be using the gears properly to get the best use of it. Okay. And they tell us more about that. Yep. But it's got a roll off in the back, so it's got a 14 speed internal box in the back. Oh my gosh. Which is here. So it's again internal, so you do that at, at a stop. Yes. If you're in the hill, wind back. Look, we'll just come too far back. So. Yeah, I suppose the roll-off hubs would be great yeah. for this, having all the internal hub gears. And it just looks really neat. Yep. If we come, if we bring the camera around this side, we can see down here where the chain is, that the, it looks really clean. There's only one gear that it's in, but you said there's actually 14 gears hidden gear. inside the hub here. So it's got plenty of gears to get up the nice steep hills, but it doesn't it's look like it. Great direct chain line. One, one spoke at the front, one gear, one gear. Wow. So the chain doesn't get worn out as quick. Yeah. Wow, that's a really long chain then. Mm, about three times the normal length. 
Wow. So they're all they're all similar. Yeah. I mean that obviously makes sense because you're going from your feet to behind your head, I suppose. Yeah. No. As you said, the wheel size, that's 26 by four and a half tires. Mm. Where those over there were 20 by two or 20 by three, mm. can be 16 by 1.75. Yeah. And then you get on the 20 inch wheels elsewhere. Lewis, you have to try Greg's seat. It is so comfortable. It is, you didn't try it before. Is that okay, Greg? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. You don't want me to sit on your helmet? Well, that's Ah. Oh, it's so much more upright as well. I don't feel like I'm I'm having to sit in a sit-up position. It's just such a good backrest. I've even got a headrest. Yeah, it's good as well. Oh. You can just like, you just feel like you can just go. Through. Yeah. Oh. Oh. See, so you've been riding this for, oh, you've even got so wrist rest. Oh, that's, that's, mate, you had it easy on our ride before. <laughs> <laughs> Adelaide recumbent riders, arr. Uh, of course, can't go wrong with the pirate socks. Uh, guys, thank you so, so much for taking Lewis out. And of course, I get to ride as well, but taking Lewis out for an, a ride on the trike. Like, that was fun. My first time, and I enjoyed it heaps. I think I might have to grab one. You literally, <laughs> we say, like, it puts a smile on your face. Of course. It's like, you can't stop grinning. And that's what it's like, isn't it? That's the, that's the only way to explain it, is that you can't stop grinning when you're riding. It's so much fun. So if you haven't got a trike, you're thinking about getting one, definitely get one. We'll see you next time. Bye.